the gut plays a major role with thyroid and as a result autoimmune thyroid diseases like Hashimoto's and Graves. Hashimoto's is the underactive thyroid which about 10 to 12 percent of the population have and Graves is the hyperactive thyroid condition about 1.5 percent of the population so a significant amount of people have these and other thyroid related conditions so it's important to understand how the gut influences the thyroid and later on how the thyroid influences the gut but it, it starts the basics of it start with the fact that digestion is critical for a healthy organ a healthy function a healthy everything in the body including your thyroid and in your digestive system it's critical to understand that uh, uh, our gut produces things like vitamin K which is which is a blood thinning cardiovascular risk reducing um, marvelous vitamin that goes around the body folic acid b2 b3 b5 b6 b7 and vitamin b12 so it, it it literally produces all those able to manufacture those in a healthy gut now on top of that it produces lots of neurotransmitters and uh, chemicals which it go to different parts of the body and influence them have a big role to play in their health and well-being or adverse effects and so on so that's the first part to do with digestion but the most obvious one when it comes down to the thyroid is that the thyroid uh, has five minerals that are critical for it. Now, the gut can't manufacture minerals. These are elements we can't change them, we can't alter them, we can alter the state of them, but we can't, we're not going to alter the amount of it. And that's iron, copper, and iodine, which are used in thyroid hormone synthesis, and selenium, zinc, which is involved in the conversion of T4 to T3. And these conditions really rely on the balance, the right balance between those. Now, what happens is any deficiency in here is going to lead to deficiencies in the other functions of the thyroid as well. And if you give you one simple example, iron, 60% of people with thyroid related conditions have significant iron deficiency, 60%. That's a large percentage of the population. Now, the challenge with that is if you go to your local GP, health professional, they'll say, okay, take some iron supplementation. That's great, but it's not fixing the underlying cause and situation and may cause problems. But let me start. Iron is, first of all, digested in the stomach. And for the stomach to digest iron, it needs a strong acid, a very low pH, a pH of around about two to three. So something around about the same pH as of vinegar and so on. That is what you want. That's why vinegar is so good. And of course, there's a video on why that works. In fact, I've got a video on how to improve your stomach acid and digestion. So check those out after this one. Because if you don't have the right stomach acid and digestion going on in the stomach, you can't get the iron. It unlocks the iron in the veggies or in the meat. It's tied away in these big protein molecules and you can't get it out and so by by literally getting the right acid it opens it up and enables digestion and the release of iron to occur now as i said typically before what the medical system would do low iron what would we do give them more iron no it it may exacerbate the problem you see when you take an iron supplement it then goes to the next stage of the gut. It doesn't have to be digested, it's already done. It goes to the intestines and there are bacteria and fungi in the gut. And these bacteria in particular are either iron neutral or iron loving or iron, they, they have a role to play. And the same thing happens to do with um, uh, zinc and selenium and the other minerals too, because they, they love them. And there are certain bacteria in the gut, things like uh, E. coli and another one here called Clostridia. And this Clostridia and the E. coli are iron loving. So they love lots of and lots of iron. So they'll take it out. Now, if you give an iron supplement, there is so much iron in the gut, it says, okay, wow, this is a great environment for these E. coli and Clostridia to breed up. So you get a lot of E. coli and Clostridia bleeding, breeding up. And as a result, you end up with gut dysbiosis. And not only that, but the gut dysbiosis, the Clostridia and the E. coli, well then, any iron that comes in 
they're the first ones to take it, hold on to it, and unfortunately, it'll eliminate it without your body being able to use it. So by taking iron supplements, you may actually be feeding the wrong bacteria that steal the iron from you. More importantly, get the digestion right in the stomach, get the digestion right in the stomach, and then the rest starts to work, get the gut microbiome working, it all turns, tends to work properly uh, and a lot better. So we've got to get those right balances going in the, in the gut. Now, when it comes to the gut and gut conditions also, it's important to understand that if you're celiac disease, you've got a much higher rate of, uh, much higher risk of having a thyroid condition. And if you've got a thyroid condition, you're much more likely to have a high rate of celiac disease and non-celiac wheat sensitivity. But also, if you've got thyroid dysfunction, an autoimmune condition, then you've got a gut dysbiosis, which I'm already alluding to with the increase in the E. coli and the e. Coli, increase in the clostridia, the iron-loving one who steal it, who literally steal it from you. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, that leads to a leaky gut. And the leaky gut means toxins from the gut, from these microorganisms, the not so good ones that are stealing the iron, are able to get through, toxins are able to get through into the blood and go to the thyroid, go to lots of parts. If you're arthritic, you'll probably find that's what's contributing to your arthritis. That's the gut arthritis connection. Yes, 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 that is a real thing. And, and so these steal it, they poison the, the body. It goes to the thyroid in the case of thyroid conditions and you end up with these autoimmune and other thyroid related conditions. Now, in this dysbiosis, you find that there's generally a lack of lactobacillus and bifidobacter. And as a result, what you want to do is, first hint, is to try and rebalance that gut microbiome away from the, the, the nasty ones to the better ones, what we would typically call, you would call probiotic, but also we call them conventional bacteria and so on. So that's how, that's how the, some of the links in there and how it works. But we also find that the gut, um, the gut thyroid link involves lots of different mechanisms. And the first one of those is the immune regulation. And if you've got an autoimmune condition, obviously the immune system is coming to play. And 70% of the immune system is around the gut. And that's obviously there to reduce the impact of uh, things, in particular bacteria and toxins and so on and other things, and protecting you. That's the role of that immune system in the gut. And your immune system is strongly influenced by anything going on in the gut. And one of these actions is inflammation. Inflammation is the underlying contributing force behind all these chronic illnesses. If you've got a thyroid condition, you've got inflammation of the thyroid. You've got joint conditions, you've got inflammation of the, of the joints and so on. And in inflammation, when you've got dysbiosis, you've got inflammation, you've got a chemical being released through the leaky gut into the blood called LPS, lipopolysaccharides. And it alters, when it gets to the thyroid, it alters the conversion of T3 and T4. Now, the balance between T3 and T4 is critical. It's absolutely critical for avoiding any of these conditions or rebalancing it to reverse or help reverse these conditions. So it's that balance, and the gut is all about the balance. Now, the gut also produces its anti-inflammatory nutrients called short-chain fatty acids. And the main one is called butyrate. Butyrate literally feeds the gut wall, it protects the gut wall, makes the gut wall healthy, gets rid of the leaky gut, but also when it gets absorbed into the blood, goes to the body and produces all these anti-inflammatory actions. But specifically, they go to the thyroid and improve thyroid function. Now, the single biggest source of butyrate are the fermentation of fibres, mixed fibres, a variety of all these different fibres in your large intestine, which goes from here across and down, uh, and those fibres are fermented, and one of the byproducts are the short-chain fatty acids, like butyrate, and they have this positive effect. So the next hint there is obviously fibre can play a critical role in thyroid function and helping, and that's what the research shows, helping with these autoimmune thyroid conditions. And then you've got other things, and these are just some examples, but you've got tryptophan, which is an amino acid, and in the gut, in the gut, tryptophan is converted to uh, serotonin and melatonin, and you'll see all my videos, I'm really big on melatonin, the fact that we don't get enough of it anymore, and we're probably not getting enough tryptophan and serotonin as well and all those, but tryptophan is involved in thyroid function as well. 
So the activation of tryptophan via various pathways and so on is involved in thyroid function. So very simply, you can see that there are lots of links between the gut communicating directly with the thyroid and improving the conditions and the functions of it. Now, there's also another major role in the gut where it recycles or eliminates the thyroid hormone. Now this, it doesn't just do it for the thyroid hormone, it does it for lots of things in the body, in particular estrogen as well. So because of the significance of estrogen, particularly post-menopausal, the gut is the single biggest organ of literally estrogen production, recycling uh, and availability. So it's called the estrobolome. Now this estrobolome, or here we'd call it the thyroxobolome, terrible name, don't, don't use that, but the, this is involved in the recycling, storage or elimination of the thyroid hormone. See, once a thyroid hormone is released, it goes to the various parts of the body and it does its action. It's activated, does it, and then it's converted. The body says, well, you've done your work, we don't want you anymore, and it does what's called conjugated. Usually it's conjugated and it locks it up and this conjugate then goes to the system, gets out and ultimately gets into the bile and out through the, the intestines, comes out in the small intestine. Now, what happens to that conjugated, that bound up thyroid hormone depends on the microbiome. If it's a really healthy microbiome, it reads what's going on in your body because you've got these receptors on your gut. It reads what's going on in the body and it recycles it or eliminates it. So it can go through a process called hydrolysis. It'll actually uh, change it again and make it more available and it can recycle it back into the blood. So it's another source of thyroid hormones. Your gut is another source of thyroid hormone, not producing it per se, but by recycling it or and or storaging, storing it or eliminating. And it plays a major role. Now that's one role. That's how, you know, some of the ways that the gut influences thyroid and hence, hence these thyroid conditions. But it's also important to understand that the thyroid influences the gut and in our body, everything is connected. Everything is connected to the gut. Everything's connected to the thyroid. They have all these interplays and there is no way known anyone could even come to understand how this all works. But at a simple level, we know that the thyroid influences the gut. And one critical area there is the movement of all of your things through your intestine. It's a, it's a mechanism called peristalsis. And peristalsis is the muscular movement, the contraction, the rhythmic contraction going through your intestine and it's moving it through. Now, if it's moving very, very slow, you've probably got, along with other conditions, an underactive thyroid because your thyroid alters the speed of this peristalsis. If you've got a very active peristalsis going really too fast, you may have graves. So there's a, a, a simple link. Now, there are lots of other things involved in um, peristalsis and foods moving through, but if typically you have a very slow colon, in other words, you go to the toilet every three or four days, then you need to look at the function, the link between your thyroid and so on. Now, so that's peristalsis. But also we find if you've got your TSH, um, uh, it leads to an increase in TSH, it leads to a decrease in Crohn's and a decrease in ulcerative colitis. So if you've got that balance there, then you have a reduced risk of inflammatory bowel disease, which is the condition that you see now on all the TV programs where people can't go too far away from the toilet, you've got these issues, and it shows that the thyroid can play a role in balancing that in the gut. Then comes the most convincing part of this argument in that when you have people with Graves' disease, one of the major autoimmune conditions, and they take the feces from those people, so the poo, and they swap it and they put it in mice that no longer have any gut bacteria. They develop the equivalent mouse version of Graves' disease. So literally you're transferring the disease from humans with it to mice with that same condition. So they develop the condition as a result of the fecal microbiome transplant. FMT, by the way, is a major term. If you want to look it up, you get FMT, Graves, and so on, and it'll, it'll show you these studies. Now, while that's absolutely convincing because it shows when you, you can transfer the disease via the gut microbiome, but the other side of it is 
When it comes to probiotics and eating well, the research shows it improves all of both of and all of these conditions. So Graves' disease, Hashimoto's and other thyroid related conditions. And probiotics generally improve thyroid function and in the general studies, and these have only been done in the last 10 years. In fact, the last ones and the last ones just the last four or five years. And this is pretty low compared to the other studies in the gut brain, which, you know, gut allergy that I wrote on 20 years ago. So it's fairly new, but it shows that the lactobacillus ruteri, which is a fairly common probiotic, increased C4, increases um, thyroid mass and function and improves or at least a more active behavior. So that's for a condition of hypothyroidism in the case of Hashimoto's. So it has a benefit there. And then there was a 20, that was basically what shows with mice and the cellular studies of mice and all those things showing this. When it comes to humans, not many studies in this area, but a 2020 study of 60 patients with Hashimoto's was done over eight weeks. And they used a combination, what's called a symbiotic, where they've got different strains of bacteria, and again, common strains, lactobacillus rhamnosus and bifidobacter lactis, and a prebiotic. Now, the specific strains of bacteria like these two, the ones I've mentioned up here, uh, all have different roles and functions. But in reality, it's really about getting the gut functioning properly again, as it should. And unfortunately, these will help a lot of people and it may not help others and there'll be other strains that can help you as well. It's, but it comes back to really getting your gut functioning properly again, right from digestion, right down to your gut microbiome. And when they had the lactobacillus and the bifidobacteria and a prebiotic, which is kind of a really enriched fiber that, that the bacteria can feed on and breed on on the way down, which improves their survival and reproduction and so on, led to a decrease in TSH, a decrease in levoxythyroxine, which is the major chemical used in um, hypothyroidism, uh, a decrease in fatigue, which is one of the, which is the outcome that you really want because these people feeling tired, fatigued because of the hypothyroidism and an increase in the free T3. That means it's not bound up, it's not locked up, it's available to be used and as a result, help balance out those, literally help balance out those uh, thyroid hormones. So the, the evidence, while it's Pretty preliminary at the moment is convincing the role of the gut. The mechanisms I've already shown you how the gut and the thyroid influence each other. So it's really important to get them both. Where do we start? Well, it starts with a really good diet. The studies already show that things like N3s, which are your omega-3 fatty acids, uh, increasing your omega-3 fatty acids benefits these conditions. Now that also benefits the gut microbiome. Healthy, nutritious, antioxidant diet, so nutrient-dense food. Get rid of all those processed foods, all those white breads and uh, white whatever processed takeaways and all those, get rid of those. Absolutely get rid of them. Get rid of the high fat, high animal consumption diet. Now people are gonna say, oh, come on, you know, you can't do that because the carnivore diet, I'm not convinced of that diet. Okay, coming back to it, your gut relies on plant-based fibers and nutrients, the polyphenols and so on, which show up as benefiting both of and all of these thyroid conditions via the gut. So we've got the omega-3s, we've got the nutrient diet, and we've got an increase in the fiber intake. And uh, check out, I have a whole video just on the benefits of fiber called the, the Most Important Supplement. So check that out. I have lots of other videos which relate to this directly and indirectly. We've got a, a couple of dozen videos just on the gut uh, and as well as other supplements which help. By the way, uh, as an aside, my focus on melatonin over the last couple of uh, months is really highlighting to people that it's such a great supplement and melatonin has been shown to help in these conditions as well and yes i'll probably do another video on that as well but melatonin linked in with that so the, there's so much evidence and information about how we can fix our gut to fix this as well as our overall health and well-being which is what we're after uh, make sure you subscribe to the video tick the boxes you like them and share it with your friends so we get this information to everybody who needs it